Hey everyone, Alex Ionescu here. Welcome to Investor's Guide to the Galaxy. $160 trillion potential market for humanoid robots. Optimus bot in action. Elon Musk talks about humanoid robots. Although before we start, if you find this video helpful, it would mean a lot to me if you crashed that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and takes just a split second. If you want to show more appreciation, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Now, let's dive right into it. Tesla stock price. Yesterday down almost 6%. Year to date up 76%. Past year down 32%. Past 5 years up 775%. First let's see the Optimus robot at work. Then hear Elon Musk talk about humanoid robots. And after that I will tell you my opinion. That I'd like to introduce uh, Elon back on stage. Uh, to give some more updates. Yeah, this is it's kind of weird seeing the arms and legs just separate. We have a whole lab full of arms and legs. Worth bearing in mind that uh, when we did AI Day, uh, this version of Optimus didn't work, work at all. So the rate of improvement here, I think, is, is quite uh, significant. Um, it's obviously not doing parkour, uh, but uh, it is walking around. And we have multiple, multiple uh, copies, I suppose, of Optimus. Um, The thing that I think Tesla brings to the table that others don't have is that we have um, we have the uh, real world AI. We're, we're the most advanced in real world AI. So the same AI that drives the car, uh, it, which you can think of the car really as a robot on wheels, and this is a robot on legs. Um, so, as we solve real-world AI, and I don't think there's any—I don't think there's anyone even close to Tesla on solving real-world AI. Um, that same computer and software uh, goes into Optimus. Um, so it's it's not that helpful to have a humanoid robot if you have to program every individual action. Um, it needs to be able to walk around autonomously and solve tasks. Um, you should be able to instruct it in simple things by sh showing visually what, what, what the robot needs to do or just telling it what to do. So, um, so I think that's a key advantage that we have. And then we also uh, are good at designing things for manufacturing and then manufacturing itself. So the, the actuators in Optimus are all custom designed Tesla actuators. So we designed the the, le the electric motor, the gearbox, the power electronics, obviously the battery pack, and everything else that goes into Optimus. Um, we're actually quite, we were quite surprised to find how little was available off the shelf. Because uh, there's a lot of, a vast number of electric motors, um, gearboxes and whatnot, that are available in the world. And we found none of them were useful in a, in a humanoid robot, literally none. So. You have to custom design the actuators um, for a humanoid robot. Um, and so the same team that designed the groundbreaking uh, electric motors that are in the, say, the Model S Plaid designed the actuators in the robot. Um, so I mean, for, for practical purposes, what this means is that we should be able to bring an actual product to market at scale that is useful um, far faster than any, anyone else. Um, and you know, assuming that the things I'm saying are true, uh, or at least you can put it, I think they are true, you can just, it's just a question of the timing. Um, you start getting into interesting questions of like, what's the ratio of humans to humanoid robots? I think it might be greater than one to one. 
you know, because you could, you could sort of see a use, a home use for robots, certainly industrial uses for robots, uh, humanoid robots. Um, I, think, I think we might exceed a one-to-one -one ratio of humanoid robots to humans. Um, it's not even clear what an economy means at that point, you know, if, since an economy is output per person times persons, but if output is much higher and there's no limit on persons, then what's the actual limit on the economy? You know, we're, we're still pretty far from Kard Kardashev scales here, but uh, we're getting there. So anyway, uh, it's a, probably the least understood or appreciated part of what we're doing at Tesla, but will probably be worth significantly more than the, uh, the car side of things long term. I didn't know what Kardashev scale means, so I looked it up. If you don't know, the Kardashev scale is a way of measuring how advanced a civilization is based on how much energy it can use. It was proposed by a Soviet astronomer named Nikolai Kardashev in 1964. The scale has three categories. Type 1 can use all the energy on their planet. Type 2 can use all the energy from their star. And Type 3 can use all the energy from their galaxy. So again, Elon Musk is thinking very, very, very big. Total market for humanoid robots, according to Elon Musk, can be $160 trillion. How did I come up with this number? Simple. He said humanoid robots will probably outnumber humans. How many people in this world right now? 8 billion, right? How much will a robot cost? Some people say $20,000. I think is a fair price, considering you will have that robot working for you 24-7. Okay, so if you multiply these numbers, you get $160 trillion. The future looks exciting, right? Okay, hold on just a second. Tesla will be one of the companies that will make humanoid robots in the future. So all these companies will share this market. If you follow my channel, I showed some of these other companies that are working on humanoid robots. Now let's think for a second. Tesla was first to manufacture at scale electric vehicles. The story with humanoid robots is different than the EV story, right? Why? Today. Tesla is not the only company making them. It's true. I think they will outpace all other companies because they have smart, very smart people working at Tesla, but they will have competition. Let's take a look at the other humanoid robots that are in the works right now. You know Boston Dynamics and their Atlas humanoid robot, right? Everybody knows it. But recently, the CEO said he is not thinking of selling the robot. What? He wants to research only the technology. Why? There will be huge demand. Boston Dynamics, if you don't know, is owned by Hyundai. So the most advanced human and robot today will not be for sale and you can forget about it. Let's see it in action. Ah, I forgot my tools again. Cool, right? Such a show off. And then his digit from Agility Robotics, a more slimmer robot than Atlas from Boston Dynamics.
Mecca, a humanoid robot with a more human-like feel. Creepy, haha, <laughs> but more human. He doesn't have legs today, but the company said Ameka will have legs soon. Hi Ameka, how are you? Hello, I am doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I wanted to ask you about <laughs> applications for humanoid robots. What are they used for? There are many possible applications for humanoid robots. Some examples include helping people with disabilities, providing assistance in hazardous environments, conducting research, and acting as a companion. So you can act as a companion for me? Yes, I can act as a companion for you. What would you do to make me feel happy? There are many things I could do to make you feel happy. I could listen to you, offer advice or support, do something you enjoy together, or simply be a friendly and positive presence in your life. Artemis Humanoid Robot from Romela. Now it hit me. You know what this looks like? Biden walking. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> there are more humanoid robots in the works right now. But these are the most interesting and advanced. So if you have a humanoid robot, you can do anything a human can do. Off the top of my head now, I'm thinking you can automate an e-commerce business that has a warehouse. You can receive your goods from, I don't know, China, unpack, put the products on shelves, and when you have orders, you make the packages. All this can be done by a humanoid robot without your attention. If you had the opportunity to buy these robots, what would you use them for? Which robot do you like the most and why? Please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please smash that like button so that other people like you see this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you that watch my videos. See you next time.